what resolution are you currently gaming on? Are you gaming on 1080p, 1440p or 4K? If you're gaming on 1080p like most people do, then this video is perfect for you. Today I'll be reviewing the AMD Radeon 6650 XT. The design on this box is actually really nice. I used to be a very keen person in PC parts. I still am, I just don't have the money to continue pursuing more PC parts for review, such as this. You can display this box as the PC enthusiast you are, you know, when you buy a new graphics card, you like to put it at the background when you're streaming or something. So yeah, let's unbox this. With me, I have the Sapphire Nitro Plus 6650 XT. There's not much in the box, uh, the quick installation guide and the uh, warranty, I believe. Aside from that, we have our card over here. Beefy boy. Oh, crap. Maybe I haven't been into the graphics card scene for a while considering of the shortage of chips and whatever not. But this card is actually really beefy. I did not expect it to be this humongous. I don't think you can... I don't think you guys can even tell on camera, but... I expected a budget GPU to be much smaller. When the box came, I was like, no way such a big card comes in that box. And it looks really good. Like, the silver? Holy crap. Okay, starting off simple, this is a dual fan card. We have three DisplayPort 1.4s, one HDMI 2.1, one ARGB connector, PCIe Express 4.0, requires a 8-pin power switch, and there is a physical BIOS switch. And the 8-pin connection is actually on the right side of the card. So you can actually cable manage it nicely like the good old way. Classic cable management. Not like the newer cards. Some of them have them in the center so it looks kind of weird and awkward. With the ARGB connector, you can basically connect your RGB strips and fans and control it all with one software. So that's really handy to have. As for a BIOS switch, it is a 3-position BIOS switch. The three different positions are basically how you want the card to run. As per standard, the card is currently on performance mode by default. If you shift it to the center, it will enable silent mode. And the third one offers a bio switch to Sapphire's Tricks software. Going to specs itself, this card has 32MB of AMD Infinity Cache. It has 17.5GB per second GDDR6 memory. It requires 180 watts of power, so minimally you would want to get a 500 watt power supply in your PC. A cool feature on the card itself, there is smart memory access and super resolution which definitely helps benefit through your gaming experience. So it helps boost your FPS, it become more gamer, more kills, become pro gamer. Very simple stuff. Now for this Nitro Plus I have over here, the design is really cool. I really love the design. It might sound like someone's pointing a gun like behind the camera, right? But trust me, it's not. The card just looks really cool and I just love PC parts. So. Yeah, anyway, aside from the card design looking extra nice, the slick black and silver design probably fits most color themes. It has second gen angular quick connect fans, which basically means you can remove the fans to replace them if anything go wrong. Since we are on the topic of fans, I'm gonna go through more about the cooling for this card. You have four composite heat pipes that go through the passive wave fin heat sink, so it reduces the heat more efficiently, keeping the card really, really cool. It's actually a really good cooling solution for a card that is actually handling 1080p gaming. And I gotta say that the whole card is only about two-thirds of the whole thing. The other one-third is just for cooling. It's pretty cool. That's why it's so beefy. It has a dedicated VRM heatsink which basically helps cool it down even more. And aside from that, this back plate seems to be made from aluminum and this should help spread out that heat efficiently for it to dissipate. As for boost clock speed, it goes up to 2689 MHz. As for the main features, you can expect from the Trix software, fan checks, RGB configurations, and you have the Trix boost. Okay, so now that we know a lot more about the cards, I'm actually going to run some benchmarks on some of the popular games. I don't really know what, what is considered a popular game because you guys only play Valorant. So I will include Valorant for sure. So yeah, let's do this. We're going to start off with PUBG. This was one of the more graphic demanding first person shooters. I could barely run this back then with my 1050 Ti, but this card manages to pull close to 120 FPS on 1080p. On 1440p, it's on 88 FPS. That's not too bad. It's still above 60, but on 4K, I wouldn't recommend it. 49 FPS, you're going to basically die. Moving on to Battlefield 5, it has a wide array of graphics, so I thought it would be a pretty good game to test out. On 1080p, it's soaring with 173 FPS. Even at 4K, it's still above 60 FPS. So this is actually not too bad. Moving on to GTA 5, it's the same result. 4K isn't that good, so I would stick to 1080p. One last game before Valorant would be Rainbow Six Siege. I play this game a lot. It still dominates the Steam charts years after its launch. By default, the game actually lowers the render scaling to increase the frame rates, but, but I set it to 100% to benchmark native rendering performance on the graphics card. 
But even still, the frame rate still did pretty well. We were sitting on 305 FPS on ultra settings for Rainbow Six Siege. So I, I can't complain, you wouldn't die. You shouldn't die, you should be pro gamer. And last but not least, we have Lauren. Everyone plays it nowadays. I don't play it, but you can play this game. On 4K, it's running 200 FPS. Seems to be doing fine. We're gonna move on to temperatures. During all the benchmarks, I took down all the maximum temperatures when it was under load. And here are the results. You probably could have guessed it, PUBG and GTA 5 being one of the harder games to run more demanding, so that got the card to be a little bit more steamy, but I would say 66 degrees for maximum temperature on ultra PUBG settings is actually still pretty good. In my opinion, anywhere below 75 or 80 degrees is a really safe zone to be in. So yeah, if the maximum temperature at 4K is 66 degrees on ultra settings, then I think this GPU cooling actually works. Pro or should I say Sapphire's cooling actually works. This is my first Radeon AMD graphics card and I gotta say that the Radeon Super Resolution is actually pretty insane. Radeon Super Resolution, which essentially lets our DNA GPUs, which is the one we have, this allows you to use the AMD's killer Fidelity FX Super Resolution tech in all games. Not just games that integrate that support, but can be used for every single game. RSR lets your Radeon GPU render games internally at a lower resolution, which then upscales it to fit your monitor's native resolution afterwards. This allows you to get faster performance you expect from running a lower resolution, but with minimal quality loss. RSR and other upscaling techniques usually work really really well for 1080p to 1440p or 1440p to 4K. I wouldn't recommend upscaling 720p to 1080p because it actually makes it a little more grainy. The software just has lesser pixels to work with because it's 720p, so it doesn't really work out as you wanted it to be. To put it as simply as I can, this is a very well designed card that can maintain cool temperatures. I would consider 66 degrees to be very cool, it has a great build quality, you have bio switch, you have good full HD and quad HD performance. As for the pricing, the one I have is by Sapphire which costs $450 off new egg. There are cheaper options from other manufacturers such as Gigabyte for $399 and ASUS at $429. And this is actually in stock. I don't know whether there's still a shortage for GPUs out there but being able to have an in stock item is just really good and it's not past $500. I consider that a good budget graphics card. Most of the games I tested aside from Valorant are somewhat graphic demanding games but I think the card actually handled it pretty well and I think if you just grab a 144Hz monitor, you have a very smooth gaming experience. Aside from that, we have come to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was my first time reviewing a graphics card, but this is a next step to reviewing other tech products. So I'm very happy to be able to review this. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I decided to change up the background since it's not keyboard related. Comment your thoughts on the graphics card down below and your thoughts on the video itself. I'm actually interested if you guys have any tips or advice for me in reviewing other products aside from keyboards. And subscribe if you are new here. I mainly focus on keyboard content but I do want to explore other options so subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.